your arguments, I think, that you laid out in the book that um, it's time to actually rethink the role of police altogether and policing as um, as a concept because also of its racist origins um, and the way that it's there, it's utilized. But in terms of reforms, I think one of the things that like my question is, are we beyond reform? Because I think that some of the some of the research that I've done since this is is showing that like all of the sensitivity trainings, racial justice awareness in police departments around the country, they don't even use language like racism. They don't say the word racism. They they just talk about some people uh, uh, come from different experiences, like and it's really really lightweight and or um, is also being run by people who in private have been sending like racist text messages to their friends. It does not. Like those systems that are supposedly designed to make the police forces better aren't actually working correctly. Could they work better? I think it's a mistake to believe that we can somehow fix policing with with some kind of sensitivity training or or really even enhanced oversight. You know, the the officers that were involved in the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis – they, they had had a whole group of these reforms that had come out of the Obama administration. They got implicit bias training. Yeah. They got de-escalation training. They got mindfulness training. They were wearing body cameras. They had a new use of force policy that emphasized sanctity of life. They had a new oversight mechanism, and, and none of it made any difference. You know, his life just didn't matter to them. And we're not going to fix that with some some training, especially yeah. so, something ridiculous as implicit bias training. And it just doesn't matter how well it's implement, implemented. All the studies show it doesn't work and it couldn't possibly work because it it just imagines that this is like accidental unconscious racism by a few individual officers, which ignores the explicit racism, mm-hmm. the structural racism and the way in which our politicians have created a racist mission for the police. But that would undo their entire point <laughs> to, to, to teach them that. It's like a kind of a, oh, like the matrix would open up. That's why they can't even talk about any of these things. Yes, they would have to take the blue pill and that's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, that it's it is so simple and yet we are sort of like working around and like holding hands of like very afraid white people who don't even like and people of means who don't even see police in their day to day lives. You know, they have no ex- interaction um, with police because they're not living in the neighborhoods that they occupy. They're not living in the neighborhoods that they are. Yeah. Like an occupying militarized force. My question is about that militarization. Is there a way we can walk back some of the extreme militarization that's happened in the last few decades, you know, or is that impossible with such a generalized militarized society? I'm still trying to find reform, you know, these steps of like, can we at least not give them tanks? I mean, I'm for that. And and that was one of the things that sort of Obama put a limit to, and then Trump said, now it's okay to give them tanks. And now Biden said, well, now we're not going to give them tanks anymore, but we're still going to give them 99% of what they were able to get under Trump. But it's not, for me, it's never just about the hardware. I mean, we do need, Biden could just very quickly quit giving this military surplus stuff, much and plus all the Homeland Security grants that allows them to buy the stuff. Mm -hmm. But part of it is much bigger. It's when the politicians tell the police to wage a war on drugs and a war on crime and a war on terror and a war on immigrants and a war on gangs and a war, you know, this means there's going to be abuse. This means it's going to fall disproportionately on the most vulnerable and the most non-white communities. And, And you just can't fix that with just some talk about a change in the technology. We got to get rid of these wars. We got to declare peace. And we got to approach the problems in our society in different ways. Hey, thanks so much for watching the Bituation Room podcast live stream. And while you're here, why don't you just subscribe to this channel? I promise it'll be good. Promise.